Welcome everyone to the first of the series of eight fireside chats where we hear from leaders about the past, present and future of SC Logistics. Together with me here today, we have Mr. Loga, CEO, and Mr. Fan, CEO of SC Logistics. Avation, I think just call us by our first name. I think that will be good for the session. By the way, congratulations uh, for being awarded the Toll Graduate of the Year. Well done to you. Yeah, thank you so much, Loga. I think I really couldn't have done it without the guidance of um, yourself, Mr. Fan, and the managers and colleagues I've made along the way. And I think I've definitely made the right choice so far to join SC Logistics because it's a really forward-looking company, you know. Every time I walk past the warehouses, there's a lot of automation, automated machinery, and just really makes me feel you know, privileged to be in such a forward-looking organization. Uh, sorry, I question I gotta interrupt you here. That's not how we started, you know. In fact, we started from a very humble beginning. So all this concrete warehouse uh, equipped with technology is something that we dare not even dream of. What we used to work with is in all those uh, storehouse shed, you know, where you have a zinc roof and a zinc wall. So, Vaishan, I think uh, you should ask Vaishan fun more questions because he's a veteran in the company for 30 years. Wow. You know, so he has a lot of history and knowledge about the company from the beginning, right? So, I, I'm a, a useful piece of furniture here. <laughs> Hope that I'm not three-legged, but I, you know, where I can contribute, I have to share. Uh, the experience and, and the, the true story that what ST Logistics been through, uh, you know, I, I'll be glad to share it in this session with you. We have come 50 years uh, so far, and I think it's not easy for any company to come 50 years. It's a really, really long time, and um, there must be a lot of challenges that we have faced along the way. So I wonder if you could take us down a trip uh, to memory lane and just share with us what are some of these, the biggest challenges that we have faced uh, so far. The foremost uh, difficulty, uh, rather than say the challenges that we had was that, you know, then, you know, there was no such thing as a supply chain uh, uh, profession. Uh, people with us were either, you know, collectively known as box mover, they were either a storeman or a driver. And uh, as I have said earlier, you know, you don't see the technology, you don't even think that the technology that we had now was possible then. Uh, so if uh, we've little to no technology, you know, things that we see here are technology breakthrough are something that, you know, doesn't exist, you know, three decades ago, four decades ago. Right? It they, they doesn't, you know, breakthroughs are simply hard to come by. I mean, Singapore has gone through a lot. You know, we have been through, we have conquered the SARS pandemic. We've just recently, uh, you know, in the steady state of the COVID-19. And um, back when I was in SARS, you know, I heard that s Logistics played a major role in procuring some of the emergency items for... How, how old were you then? Oh, I was uh, very, very young, very, very young. But I heard from my colleagues who were around then that we actually participated and played a major role. I think you were probably in school then, right? Correct, correct. I, I think, you know, your, your teacher gave you the thermometer. That come from us. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, thinking back, it's really quite, quite amazing, you know. SC Logistics have been with me in my, in my studying years, in my army, and up to now, I'm working in the company. I actually heard from my colleagues that actually we played a major role in the COVID-19 pandemic. Where we helped to procure emergency items for, for the country. So I wonder, could, could any of you share any interesting stories that happened during our our procurement process? Yeah. Yeah. So, Vaishan, uh, I think you were you, you just joined the team then, right? Uh, this COVID, uh, the initial same thing came somewhere in December 2019 and January 2020. Uh, our experience in SARS, and there are many people in the company still with the knowledge of what happened in SARS. So we always have a look up for 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 things like uh, you know pandemic that happens around the world and. Since, uh, you know, in Singapore, we don't produce any of these essential PPEs, um, we got to move very early in the game uh, to procure the PPEs uh, required by, you know, our frontline uh, nurses and doctors. You know, there'll definitely be a shortage. Uh, you would have seen in, in some of the advanced countries how nurses and doctors didn't even have basic PPE, uh, you know, to, to protect themselves in order to you know, uh, attend to the patients. But in Singapore, I think, uh, you know, we are very fortunate that, you know, we have a group of people who understand this, working with the ministry, with uh, the healthcare service providers, to bring in very early, very quickly, very early, very fast, to equip ourselves sufficiently uh, for the long, long haul, you know. So our experience in SARS, I think, uh, came in very handy for us to respond to this crisis. And I'm glad that, you know, our people, uh, stood up to, uh, you know, and support the national effort for this pandemic, you know. Uh, these lessons will hold us very well for the future, just like, you know, the lessons of SARS 
and how we responded helped us to, to, to tie over this period. So I wonder, Mr. Fan, do you have any other interesting stories that you could share with me, perhaps uh, of a memorable event that we, we played a major role in for Singapore? Yeah. Oh, uh, certainly, you know, uh, all of us uh, were sad, very sad, you know, the demise of our founding father, Lee Kuan Yew. So, uh, you know, even, you know, for that national level moaning, uh, our event logistic capability came into play. And uh, that is also where uh, we actually broke the, the local record. Uh, I mean, that, that is, 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 you know, maintained by me and not by any other body, is that we lay the longest uh, barricade uh, during the uh, funeral procession of uh, Lee Kuan Yew. Well, this is a really interesting piece of trivia that I would never have known uh, had I not asked you the question. Yeah, yeah. So the, 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 the other interesting story that I like to say is that, you know, that again, another national event, and that happened to be the GE, uh, general election. The GE happened at the same time when, you know, the Chinese had the Hungry Ghost Festival. And you know, you know, Tantage are uh, much sought after uh, during Hungry Ghost Festival. At the same time, you know, we need a lot of Tantages uh, to support the GE and how we actually came up with the innovation to use containers instead of Tantages when, you know, nationally we are facing a shortage uh, to have two event running concurrently. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much Fan for sharing these uh, really interesting stories. So we have spoken a little bit about the past and the present. So perhaps now would be a good time to talk about the future of STL. So right now we live in very you know, uncertain times, but I you know we have been doing well. So may I just ask, you know, what, what are the future challenges that, that you foresee we face ahead? And how do we ensure that we continue you know, having a good, you know, good strong business? Yeah. So Vishen, one of the things I think the uh, company is focusing is a lot more on holistic development of the company. And one of the things that come to my mind is about sustainability, right? Uh, the current generation, the previous generation have used enough resources from the world, but I think we should leave enough for the future generations also to enjoy what we have enjoyed in the past. So the focus of the company will be a lot on sustainability uh, and environmental uh, impact and, and, and things like that. You know, those will be the important areas of focus and fund you want to add anything? Yeah, so at the business front, I think sustainability, of course, is a global concern for all. And to all business, uh, it can be a liability because, uh, you know, you will have to do things differently, something that you are not used to, uh, you know, as what you practice in the past. For example, you know, you use an EV, uh, you have to put in a lot of money to invest. So uh, what you know, myself and Loga, you know, have actually looked at these uh, challenges and say that, you know, we are actually very determined uh, to turn this liability to an opportunity. For example, in time to come, the customer who engage us would like to see us do the same or more with a lesser carbon foot footprint. For example, the EV, you know, will help to do that. Am I right? Today, we are using uh, ICE uh, vehicles, you know, that actually is very harmful to the, to the greenhouse uh, effect, am I right? So, uh, you know, back to the point, uh, this can be deemed an opportunity for us. Uh, you know, we invest a lot of money on automation and digitalization, but if our people are not concurrently upskill and reskill, um, it'll be a challenge. If you learn a skill, it's going to be with you for long term. Uh, but of course, the changing trend in technology means that uh, there's a lot more requirement for agility in our people. And that's important because technology, you know, will continuously evolve and change. And if our people got the agility and understanding that they got to change with this, I think uh, that will be the great advantage to the company and to the individuals as well. But having said, you know, uh, what we're looking at, uh, one thing doesn't change at all. You know, whatever we focus on, uh, development, improvements and innovation, fundamentally, I think one thing doesn't change and that is our value system. Uh, how we, we look at things, how we should respond to crises, uh, you know, our 24-7 response, our DNA, uh, you know, uh, our attitude towards serving the national effort and Singapore being centre of everything that we do. That fundamentally doesn't change and, and that is important. And I think that will help us to continue, you know, serving uh, our nation uh, in the best possible manner, perhaps in the next 50 years. When I hear what Logar say, it, actually now it linked. Everything, you know, seems to, to have a connection. So we talk about sustainability, 
that is actually you know what we actually wanted to do. Uh, to to many, it's a liability, but you know it make us live our purpose. And our purpose is is one of that you know a do well, do good company. Doing well by doing good, right? And and sustainability. Uh, trying to uh, lower the carbon footprint is something that is good. So again, you know, if you look at all the the you know the key ingredient of our success is actually you know our DNA. And our DNA actually is, uh, you know, make us, you know, besides being hardworking people, innovative, forward-looking, you know, it also embody this thing called, you know, whatever thing we want to do it must eventually contribute to the greater good uh, of human, you know, or in particular for Singapore and Singaporeans. But Vincent, more than asking us, perhaps the next 50 years is yours. You should answer this question. Sure, I think, <laughs> yeah, definitely that, that's one uh, key reason why I joined the company in the first place because there's a big lot of a uh, public service element. I can really see the good that we are doing for Singapore, especially when during you know, national events such as uh, helping Singapore tight through the pandemic or you know, supporting the National Day or even other major events such as even the F1. So I, I really feel you know, fortunate to be in a company that's doing good for Singapore and for the world in general because we are trying to cut down and trying to lead some of these sustainability efforts in the supply chain industry. So uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the years ahead for STL. Yeah. So this topic on sustainability, I think will be perhaps a, a, a big enough topic for another chat session. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I think thank you Mr. Loga and Mr. Fan for your time today. I think I learned a lot about the history of how ST Logistics started, the challenges we faced along the way. You mentioned some key national events that we supported and we talked a little bit about the innovation and what are we doing to keep our people relevant and how to keep our business continuing for the many years ahead, 50 years ahead even. So thank you for your time, Mr. Loga, Mr. Fan. And for everyone else out there, please keep a lookout for the next Fireside Chats ahead. <laughs>